don't sleep at night. I stay up waiting for the light. I tell myself it'll be all right. But what I see when I'm looking down is just sadness all around. And the angels don't make a sound. Now if Jesus could have a say, he'd make those kings kneel down and pray. And they'd confess they walked away. They'd confess they walked away. Will you forgive us? Can you forgive me all that day? I shook hands with the devil I stood and listened to his lies Thought I saw the angels falling And the sun it covered up his eyes I shook hands with the devil I stood and choked upon his lies Thought I saw those angels falling And the sun it covered up his eyes Will you forgive us? Can you forgive me on that day? Probably the most haunting two questions in that song for me. Can you forgive us, God? Because we are those Western nations who turned our backs collectively back in 1994. We, as Canadians and Americans and members of the Western world, are the ones who let the UN force diminished so that over 800,000 Rwandan men, women, and children would die. And I can still see the images of, I think it must have been the same documentary that you mentioned, Kara, uh, running through my mind. And I'm not sure that they're ever going to go away. There's one scene where somebody with a very long lens on a video camera is filming uh, three people or two people kneeling on the ground and others with their machetes poised above them and then butchering them live. And then it moves to a scene where there is a young boy uh, lying in a ditch somewhere and his eyes are open and you're thinking he's dead and then he blinks and you realize he's been left there to die. Those images indicting me, indicting us. <clears throat> this tragedy, clearly in the wisdom that retrospect history gives us, could have been avoided if we would have stayed or tossed a few thousand UN troops into that country, if we would have cared The opposite of love is not hate. The opposite of love is apathy. All that is necessary for the triumph of evil, Edmund Burke famously wrote, is for good men to do nothing. Imagine being a good man caught in the middle of the genocidal hell that was Rwanda in that day. Such was the plight of our Canadian general, Romeo Dallaire. Imagine being witness to some of the worst carnage and suffering that humanity has ever unleashed upon itself. 
seeing it play out before your very eyes and not being able to do anything, anything material, to stop it. How do you do it, God? How does the one who arguably loves those who he has made more than any of us ever could, how do you handle the suffering of such carnage? And not just even in this event, even, but throughout the history of humanity and time, through crusades and holocausts and Worldwide natural disasters, God, you stand witness to broken marriages, to the death of a child, to the terrible impact and lingering power of sin in the world. You stand, you stand witness, God, perfectly in an omniscient, omni every way. You see it all. How do you do that, God? Romeo Dallaire lost his mind for a while. Does God lose his mind? Romeo Dallaire fell into a very, very deep and dark depression. Do you get depressed, God? And yes, it is an inexplicable mystery as to why God then did not intervene in Rwanda in order to stop this from happening. Why God does not intervene in your life right now. Why God did not intervene when that breakup happened. The risk in God giving humanity free will so that we can choose to love God and to love others is that we then have the opportunity, woefully taken way too often, to choose the opposite. Instead of choosing heaven on earth, way too often we choose hell instead. And this too must grieve our maker unimaginably to respect our choices to that degree. This morning, I can't even begin to talk about or answer that question. Why does God allow evil and not intervene if he's good? Nobody can answer that question this side of heaven. But inside of that big question, there's another question. And that is, how, God, do you handle it watching all of this? As I engaged Romeo Dallaire's story this week, I kept doing this math trying to look through his suffering and his bearing of the image of God. He's made in the image of God. So the thinking is, if I look through him and his story, this story, this parable, maybe I could see something of who you are, God. Can I know you, God, more through this terrible, terrible parable? I thought, God, you are love and you are perfection and you are all-powerful, and you are good. And in this community, we believe, in the Christian community, that that good, that love, that power has a name. Jesus Christ, God with us, through suffering, through struggles, through joys, celebrations, through pain, through all of our questions about the inexplicable nature of good and evil in our world. A with us that if you know that he's with you is enough. A with us that's big enough than all the questions and all the tears. Reviewing the circumstances of Dallaire's time in Rwanda, I noticed in the kind of macro view of his story, that his advice was refused. His decisions and wisdom were questioned. His position of authority was mistreated and discarded. His angry outbursts were deflected. 
his cries for justice ignored. He was despised and rejected by others, a man of suffering and familiar with pain. Surely he took up our pain and bore our suffering in that hellish place. Yet we considered him punished by God, stricken by him, and afflicted. He was abandoned by the entire world, or so it seemed. And yet he stuck to his mission to the very end, through death. Delaire is often chided by his wife and those around him, and even by history, for taking way too much responsibility for what happened there upon himself. If only I'd, if only I'd. And part of that judgment or that word back to him is surely right. No one man could have stopped all of this. But there's something in me that sees a beauty in him doing that, in a human being erring in that direction instead of the other direction of apathy. Jesus took the brokenness of an entire world upon himself, being perfect and having nothing to do with how it all went wrong, no fault of his own. In that, I look through Delaire, and I see a bit of the face of Christ. Let's pray. God, help us to be people like that. People who, when others scratch us, can be looked through. Uh, that people who become iconic in a way. People who mystically show your heart and your face and your passion and your perseverance and your desire for justice and goodness and truth in this world. Let some of that characteristic be what identifies, makes up, lives in us. We are divided beings who turn the other way more often than any of us would want to admit. And not just in big global Rwanda-like stories, but at work and in our families and toward friends and people we meet at strangers. Just grab us by the chin and turn our heads back again toward those people and toward you, we pray. This is the one life that we have been given. Deliver us from ourselves and deliver us unto you. In Jesus' name, we pray. Amen.